Hi, Sean the EQ Commando, developing excellence with emotional intelligence and I'm working from home today. So I regularly get asked questions when I'm out either delivering presentations, working with teams or networking. And uh, one of the questions I get asked is, excuse me, is how do I get my team to love their job and give 100%? Okay, uh, A, aiming for 100% is admirable. Fantastic. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who the leader was, but they did say that uh, uh, after a report that came out that any uh, a, a group of employees uh, on average would give something like about an hour and a half to two hours a day of actual real work. Um, and his comment was he'd be delighted if he could get that much work out of his employees in the day. That smacks for me of two particular things. Uh, one is the team are not engaged, his, his employees, his, his group of, of uh, workers are not engaged. Uh, and not to mind 100%, uh, they're probably only about 5-10% engaged. The second thing was he already has a major problem. Because his team are not engaged and it's been going on and his desire and wish is to have more work out of them, uh, which basically means more engagement, um, and if he is not going to become the kind of leader that would garner 50% out of his team, then just wishing for it isn't going to make it happen. The culture has to change within the company, and then the trust has to be built basis that culture for the people to engage themselves and to see it not just as a job. Does that make sense? Okay, so how do you get a, a, a team to give you 100% uh, or as near as damn it? Well, the first thing is, as I've touched on already, is trust. You have to build trust within your organization. It has to be one of the, the cultural values of the, of the company. In building trust, and the way you do that is by repetition and making decisions basis your values. So it becomes even simpler to build trust when you hire the right people for the business. As opposed to hiring people for the skill set, hire them for their attitude. Hire them because their values are aligned with your organization, with where you want to go and what you want to happen and how you want it to happen. And I don't mean the, the actual systems, plans and processes of how. I mean, in what manner do will the company deliver the product that they're actually delivering? Uh, is it engaging their clients? Is it in the best uh, interest of their clients? That kind of thing. So if you bring somebody on board onto the team who already has aligned values with you, then getting 100% or getting 80% out of them for them to bring their A game is going to be an awful lot easier because they're aligned with your values and they're already engaged with you and the company as, as, as you want it to happen. So that's really the first thing. The second thing is building trust as you go. So whatever decisions you make with the direction of the company, with, with uh, what you want the team to, to be involved with and how you want them to do things, that has to be aligned with the values that you've, you've set in place. So if you don't hold yourself to the values that you've set in place, how can you expect your, your team to do that? Plus, you're not building trust in yourself and the values that you've said you represent. So trust is, is absolute key as a second one. And of course, this happens over a period of time. Each time, as I said in a previous video, you're paying into an emotional bank account, you're building trust with your team. They see you as the kind of leader that they would follow into battle. But that takes time as well. And you have to keep reinforcing that by the decisions you make and by the interactions you have with each person on the team. Um, it reminds me of a story, and I'm just I'm referring to notes here just to keep myself on track, uh, because I've been asked hundreds and hundreds of questions. Um, it reminds me of that 100% from a team. Uh, my time in the in the Royal Marines many years ago, I remember seeing the the different style of leadership and wondering why the hell one, one leader uh, could get absolute buy-in from the team and they would do anything. Uh, for, for the, the leadership. 
and then on other occasions uh, when the, the team was just going, no, that, that guy's an idiot, I'm not going anywhere with him. Uh, what really struck me about that on reflection was that one was being a charismatic, uh, trustworthy, uh, clear, confident leader, and the other seemed to be being directed by somebody behind the scenes uh, at a political level and not really being confident with the decisions and the delivery and also the one thing that really struck me was not being seen to be engaging the men on the ground uh, as often and as regularly as possible. So there was a couple of things there that um, the disconnect between who we thought the person was being who they said they wanted to be and who they were being, and then the way, their way of communicating that to us directly. Uh, and I was involved in a, a, a number of interesting operations, uh, one out uh, in a, a warm desert place, where I noticed that the, uh, the leader had uh, come out on the ground uh, to have a look at the position we were, we were defending. And the key element was that we had been told a certain thing was going to go a certain way and that we were there to do a certain thing. So in theory, the mission was clear, uh, the big why was, was big enough, um, and all that had to happen then was we as, as a team uh, had to do the, the what and the, the how. I did, however, have a, a, an issue at the time that nobody had said to us about um, writing out our letters home just in case none of us made it back. And you'd think that given the, the, the uh, mission that we'd been given and given the assets that we'd been given, well-resourced in theory, um, we would have, have easily come through this particular battle and come out the other side and everybody would have been hunky-dory, mostly. The challenge was that the big picture we were given, the uh, mission we were given, and then the resources that were given to support us, they didn't match up, they didn't marry up. We found ourselves exposed without the right resources uh, against a, an opposition that um, would very quickly and easily outmaneuver, outgun uh, and uh, overpower us because they were using tanks and we were using uh, small arms. And the, 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 when I got an opportunity to speak to the, uh, the, the leader, I raised this particular point, not about being under-resourced, but about the fact that nobody, given the fact that we were being under-resourced and the position we were in, nobody had indicated to us that we should actually take care of the uh, emotional side, the, the emotional admin side for the team and have people to write their letters home just in case they didn't make it. And once we had realized the gravity of the situation as to where we were, then I took it upon myself to say to the guys, get your letters written because there's a very good chance none of us are going to come out the other end here. And I thought that that was really a reasonable thing to do. And in my eyes and in a number of the guys' eyes, the leadership had failed us. They had withdrawn too much out of our emotional bank account, not paid enough in, not really given the sense that they cared about us. We were just cannon fodder. Uh, that had a very Im big impact on, uh, on the rest of my uh, career. So really the key here is how to get your, your team to really buy in and give you 100%. Well, be the kind of leader that the team would willingly follow into battle, that they would buy into who you're being, um, be trustworthy and manage yourself and do it at every single opportunity. And remember to pay into their emotional bank account and do that by really listening to what the team uh, need, what their concerns are, and, uh, and resource them, and then get out of their way. I'll do another piece on micromanaging later. Okay, that's Sean out. That was rather a long one. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk soon. Bye.